Christ is risen from the dead, by death trampling down upon death, and bestowing life unto those in the tomb. Και τη εντυσμή μαζί 
Zoe Carissa Mello. Christ is risen from the dreaded, trampling down upon them, and to those in the tombs he has granted love. Anastasio Jesus apotuta fukatos proibe, edo genimi tineonio zoi ke mega Having risen from the grave as he foretold, Jesus gave us eternal life and his great mercy. Αναστάσω Ιησού από του τάφου, καθώ προείπε εδώ και την αιώνιον ζωή και μεγα Και απευθέξα το 
Servant Anastasios, who has fallen asleep, O Christ our God, 
in you we give glory, together with your beginningless Father, and your all holy, good, and life-giving Spirit, now and forever to the ages of ages. Family, 
friends and his comrades in arms. Christos Anesti. Christ is risen. In the face of the overwhelming grief and of the sorrow of this moment, the Church speaks to us with the name of the man we are here to remember and honor today for Anastasius Tassos means resurrection. We proclaim the fundamental truth of our faith with every mention of his name, a name that we will repeat for all the days to come and which will live on forever in our hearts. Anastasius Tsakos, or Tasso, as we all know him, was taken all too soon from his loving Irene, Irene, from his precious children, from his parents, and from his family and friends, and of course, from his brothers and sisters in the police department of the city of New York, which he served with honor, with dedication, and service above and beyond the call of duty. Last week, in the midst of our Holy Week, when the Lord of the Universe laid down his life for the sake of the world, Tasso gave up his life, gave up his life in the service of those he has sworn to protect and to serve. Like his brothers and sisters, who down the blue to serve their fellow human beings, he was engaged in the service of others when, in a split second, that devotion to duty cost him his life. There is no justice on this earth that can bear him back to us. And so, we are gathered here today to bear him to his earthly rest. Officer Chakos looks down today from heaven, looks down on all of you who have filled this church here. And in your tears, in your pain, in your righteous anger, and your bitter sorrow, Tasso is present. He is present in his beautiful children for whom we all now bear the duty to tell them of their father. He is present in his beloved Irene, Irene, for whom we all now bear the responsibility to comfort and to support. He is present in his mother and father, who gave to Tasso a love of America, the land of his birth, and gave him a love of Greece, the land of his childhood. They brought up Tasso to be a true patriot of Greece, which means a true fellow and fellow countryman. They brought up Tasso to be a true patriot who served his fellow citizens by choosing to wear the blue to be a part of the bulwark and vanguard of those who safeguard our lives and freedoms. And he did it in the greatest police department in the world, the NYPD. And he was also the proudest expression of this He was a son 
of St. Demetrius High School in Astoria, who returned to Greece after college to serve in the Greek army, finishing his national service as a second lieutenant, and with the vision of enlisting in the aviation division, receiving his degree from Darling College right here in Long Island, he joined the NYPD. Tasso's dedication to his family and to others was not a single facet of his life, but was a brilliant glow that suffused every aspect of his existence. There was always a helping hand and a helping heart. His willingness to put others first was a manifestation of his deepest character, one of love and sacrifice. His death, so wrong and so unjust, and for all, a grievous bitterness. His death shows the depth of sacrifice that our police and public servants, our firemen, and EMPS is put on the line every day. They leave their homes and the security of their families to ensure that our homes are safe and that we sleep secure. The presence of so many police here today from all over New York and beyond is a conscious reminder of how deep their commitment is to service and how much the sacrifice of their brother in arms, who was always the first to arrive and the last to leave, means to them and should mean to all of us. Otaso was taken all too soon from the loves of his life. The sacrifice is a cross to bear, but one that will lead to resurrection and one day reunion, like his name, Anastasios, means resurrection. His liveliness, his ingenuity, and his love of craft are painful reminders in this present moment. I pray that over time, time, time which is the great healer of loss, the little things that we treasure above all others, Irene, Agapiti, Irene, the time will give you some peace and memories of love and fondness. For those who have come from far and wide to be here to pray with us today, I will not say that you do honor Tasso so much as his sacrifice honors you. Your profession and your service to our community is sanctified by Tasso's devotion to duty, which did not shrink from giving the last full measure. You are all heroes, heroes of our community who offer your lives every day for all of our lives. I earnestly pray that God will keep you all safe, safe and sound, as you continue your honorable service to us all. I cannot explain why the life of Officer Anastasios Chakros was required in this moment, but I do know that neither his life nor his death was in vain. We are better people because he was the best of us. I want to recognize especially the members of St. Paul's Society, of our NYPD, Fraternal Organization of Orthodox Christian Officers. I know that you will be a constant support to Irini, to his wife, and to his children, Jenny and little Stavro. It is the loving embrace of all of you 
which I pray will allow Irini and the family to carry on Tasso's name and legacy. And I want to recognize the munificence of the Tamil to Towers Foundation, which was established in memory of firefighter Stephen Siller, who laid down his life to save others on 9-11. The foundation is securing the home of Tasso's family. Between that tunnel and those towers, the St. Nicholas Church is rising again, a resurrection that Tasso's name in both, and for which he now prays with us in heaven. He was, like so many before him, and like those who come after him, Fidelis ad mortem, pistos acritanatum, which means faithful unto death. Officer Tasso Chakos was this and more, much more than this. We honor his life, and we recognize in his death the faithfulness of a heart that was filled with love for all. Although we desire with all our hearts to have him with us, we can know that we now have a guardian angel to look over us, Tasso. Tasso was faithful unto his end of watch, and now he watches over us, over his beloved Irini, his wife, his precious Jenny and Savo, the children, and over all his sisters and brothers in blue. May our loving and merciful God grant you all peace, comfort, and the consolation that comes from our hope of the resurrection and from the knowledge of life everlasting. And may he grant the soul of his faithful servant, Anastasius, Tasso, eternal rest in the bosom of Abraham, repose in the tabernacles of the righteous, and a place in his heavenly mansions. May his memory be eternal. Please allow me to say a few words in the language that he spoke with his mother and father, the Greek language. He was a proud Greek Orthodox pastor. Christos Anesti, Agapiti, no other thing. In a politis poli, η θέση οποιοδήποτε να αποχαιρετήσει έναν τέτοιο ήρωα, έναν τέτοιο πατέρα, έναν τέτοιο σύζυγο, ένα τέτοιο πατριώτη, ένα τέτοιο παιδί της Ελλάδας, ο οποίος όπου και να πήγε, μόνο υπερήφανος έκανε τη γυναίκα του και τα παιδιά του, τον πατέρα του και τη μητέρα του, τα αδέρφια του, την εκκλησία του, και την πατρίδα του, διότι ήταν ένα άνθρωπο προσφορά και αγάπη. Όχι στα λόγια, όχι σε κηρύγματα, αλλά στην πράξη. Άνθρωπο που αγαπούσε πραγματικά τον πλησίον και τον μοιαζόταν. Γι' αυτό ο Θεό, για λόγου που μόνο εκείνο ξέρει και το ανθρώπινο μυαλό αδυνατεί να καταλάβει. Δεν μπορεί ανθρώπινο μυαλό να καταλάβει γιατί ένα τέτοιο άνθρωπο έπρεπε να φύγει και μάλιστα με αυτόν τον τρόπο. Δεν το χωράει το μυαλό μα και ομολογώ ότι ω αρχιεπίσκοπο, ω θεολόγο, ω κληρικό, ω χριστιανό, ω ορθόδοξο, δεν μπορώ να βρω λόγια για να παρηγορήσω όλη αυτή την κοινωνία. Πρώτα απ' όλα τη σύζυγό του Ειρήνη, τα παιδάκια του, τον πατέρα και τη μητέρα, τα αδέλφια. Δεν υπάρχουν λόγια. Αυτό που μπορούμε να κάνουμε σε τέτοιες στιγμές, αγαπητοί μου, είναι να αγκαλιάζουμε ο ένα τον άλλο και να δείχνουμε αγάπη. Πρέπει να αγκαλιάσουμε αυτούς που άφησε τη ισοτά σας, να τους υποστηρίξουμε και να αφήσουμε το Θεό να μιλήσει στις καρδιές τους και να αφήσουμε το χρόνο 
να κλείσει σιγά σιγά αυτή τη μεγάλη πληγή. Ο Τάσος, όπως είναι και το όνομα, έφυγε στον ουρανό σε μια εποχή που ο ουρανός είναι ανοιχτός, είναι η Ανάσταση. Όταν λέει αναστήθηκε ο Χριστός, άνοιξαν οι τάχτοι στα Ιεροσόλυμα και οι νεκροί αναστήθηκαν. Σε μια τέτοια μέρα, ακόμα και η κηδεία του Τάσου, δεν είναι κηδεία κανονική. Ψάλαμε όλα τα αναστάσιμα τροπάρια. Παραξενευτήκατε ίσως που δεν ακούσατε την κανονική κηδεία, αλλά είναι το αποχαιρέτισμα της Εκκλησίας σε κάποιον που ανεβαίνει κατευθείαν στον ουρανό, σε εποχή που ο ουρανός είναι ανοιχτό από την Ανάσταση του Κυρίου και δέχεται τις ψυχές των εκλεκτών του και ένα τέτοιο εκλεκτός ήταν ο Τάσος. Αιωνία του Ιμνήμη. Η Ειρήνη να έχει υγεία να τον θυμάσαι, να μεγαλώσει τα παιδιά του και να μιλάς για τον πατέρα τους και να είναι υπερήφανοι και η γέννη πιο μικρός. Και εσείς, πατέρας και μητέρα του, αποχαιρετάτε έναν ήρωα της πατρίδας, ένα γενναίο παιδί, έναν πρότυπο χριστιανό, ένα καλό παιδί. Δεν έχω λόγια να σας πω, μπορώ μόνο να σας πω ότι θα είμαι εγώ, η Εκκλησία και όλη η ομογένεια, όλη η αστυνομία της Νέας Υόρκης. Οι πάντες θα είμαστε κοντά σα. Αιωνία του Ιμνή. At this point, we would uh, like to invite to the podium for his remarks the mayor of the city of New York, the Honorable Bill de Blasio. Thank you, Father. And thank you for all you've done to comfort the family. Your Eminence, it's a tremendous honor for all of us to have you here. I know for this good family, your presence means so much. We're all mourning right now. We're all in pain right now. It does not make sense that such a good man in every way could possibly be gone. The family is mourning someone they love with all their heart. The NYPD is mourning a fallen brother. The city is mourning a lost guardian. The man who did everything right. It does not make sense how someone could live his life right in every way and be taken from us so horribly. But his heroism uplifts us. Some people are true heroes. Some people are there for others. And that, in every way, was Anastasios Sakos. Every story I've heard is of a man who went the extra mile for someone else, no matter what. No matter what. A neighbor who needed help during COVID, or a fellow officer, or a stranger he met in crisis, whoever it was, he was there for them. Because that was his heart, to serve others. For 14 years, he served this city with tremendous distinction. His love for New York City, his love for America, his love for Greece, his love for his family, love, duty, honor, animated him in every way. We all growing up are taught stories of Greek heroes. Today we honor a Greek hero from our time. In the stories and mythology, we hear of extraordinary acts and selflessness and greatness, and here is a man who exemplified all that and more. Family, this beautiful and strong family, is going through an unspeakable pain right now. When I spoke to them, one thing came through loud and clear. 
We cannot let him have died in vain. And so for all of us, there is something we can do. For all of us, we can recognize something is wrong. And we can work hard to fix it. Anastasios was never afraid of hard work. We have some hard work to do. We have to bring our communities back together in peace and unity. We have to bring police and community back together and rebuild that bond. And we have to do something to ensure that what happened to him never happens to another officer or another loved one because it is wrong. In our society, somehow, when people drive while intoxicated, somehow, in some way, it is still tolerated. And it cannot be. Because anyone who drives while intoxicated threatens the lives of everyone in their path. And the laws are not strong enough. Because it still happens all the time, every day, hour by hour. It's something we all know is wrong, and yet, we watch. So I say this, this year, we have a chance to finally do something different, to pass a law in Albany that will finally penalize those who drive drunk and hurt others and kill others, to finally create consequences where they have not existed, to take this problem seriously, to ensure that truly are penalties for those who have done wrong. This work has to happen now. And I hope we will all join together. Because until people truly pay the consequences for their actions, someone else will get behind the wheel tonight and put everyone else in their path in danger. We need to make this change. And we need to make it in honor of Officer Anastasio Sachs. To this family, to Irene, your strength is so clear, your heart is so clear. To his parents, Anna and Steve, what you did in bringing up this young man should be a source of tremendous pride, even in this moment of pain, because he did so much good in this world. To his sister, Katina, his brother, I know you will be there for these good children. And I want to say these children to Jenny and Steve, even though I know these words can't make sense at this young age. A word I hope will bring you comfort. Because in my own way, I can understand a little bit of what you will feel in life. I lost my father young. He wore the uniform of his country. And you will feel a loss. You will feel something missing, but you'll feel also an angel on your shoulder. Because your father was a hero, and now the whole world knows him. And you will know, even in the most painful moments, even in moments of doubt, that you were born of a hero. That hero will be watching out for you every day of your life. Let's all be there for this family and be there for each other. Thank you, and God bless you all. At this time, at this time we would kindly ask the police commissioner of the New York City Police Department, the Honorable Dermot Shea, to approach for his remarks.
staff and congregation of St. Paris City Greek Orthodox Shrine Church. Father Anastasio of our NYPD chapter here. Thank you for hosting us inside this beautiful place of worship today. Irene, Stavos, Jenny, Anna, Stavos, Shakira, Debbie, extended family and loved ones. Mary de Blasio, Inspector Papa Michael, Captain Yeager, and all of Anastasio's co-workers and friends. Two families. On behalf of the entire New York City Police Department, I extend to you our most profound condolences. As we gather here today, still reeling from the tragic death of Tassa, as everyone knew him, we are shocked, scared, angered at the unfairness and senselessness that took him from us. We seek to make sense of this to understand why it happened. What plan could it have been part of? What possible lesson could be gleaned from this? Well-meaning and intentioned people will tell us that it was all part of God's plan. And that Tassa was in a better place. And I believe that's true. But at the same time, we cry out that while God certainly knows his plan, we do not. And while Tasso may indeed be in a better place, we all want him here with us. And unfortunately, there are no easy answers. As a family, as friends, as a community, we express our sadness. We acknowledge the great importance of Tasso's life. And we acknowledge the loss that his passing brings to all of us. And although we must bravely face the fact of his death, we owe it to Tasso and to ourselves to celebrate his contributions to this world. His journey to assist other highway patrol officers on the Long Island Expressway last Tuesday changed all of our lives forever. But that journey is just one of a multitude of journeys that will have a lasting effect on us. What is it that takes a man from a humble origin to a number of very interesting places to learn, to live, to love, to build a family, to achieve all sorts of success, to make many friendships, and to live a vast array of wonderful experiences? Well, my job as police commissioner today is to stand up in here and tell you what a great cop Tasso was. And he absolutely was a great cop. But the man I've gotten to know over the last week or so through your stories is much more. Tasso was, from beginning to end, a very intelligent and hardworking man. He was the envy of his peers. He was really the perfect depiction of the American dream, an example of our nation's great diversity. Also an example of the extraordinary call to service that so many courageous New Yorkers embrace, even though, if only for a small part of their lives. Born in Dover, New Hampshire, Tasso had the benefit of fiercely proud parents, determined to make sure that their child was raised Greek, and always understood their Greek heritage. And I can appreciate that because I had similar parents with a different heritage. For the first 14 years of his life, Tasso lived and flourished in Neapolis, about 5,000 miles away, a small coastal town in southern Greece. In the early 1990s, he, his brother, Teddy, and his father returned to the United States, where Tassel would graduate from high school, achieve a degree in aviation administration here on Long Island. At 23 years of age, Tassel worked at one of his father's diners. Fort Washington, the Haven Diner. And he had a plan, Tasso did, which was one day to fly helicopters. But first, Tasso had an obligation to uphold. It was a requirement that as a Greek living abroad, he could have put off, but he chose not to. Sign of the man he was. So he returned to his ancestral homeland and enlisted in the Greek army for a year. 
finding himself immediately promoted to second lieutenant due to his status as a college graduate. Tassel liked authority, and it came through in story after story that I heard. What it meant, what it stood for, he liked honesty, he was a man of honor, and he liked order in his life. In a continuation of his plan, he returned to America and joined our police department in 2007, with again the end goal of getting behind a helicopter for the NYPD. Along the way, he had become a private pilot and was licensed to fly single engine planes. He would take single trips out of MacArthur Airport on Long Island and log over 300 hours. After the police academy, Tassel was assigned first to the 75th Precinct and then to the 83rd Precinct in Brooklyn. Again, for those that are not part of our police department, these are very tough assignments. And he relished it. And since 2014, Tassel was an invaluable member of the NYPD's elite highway patrol unit. Highway doesn't just take anyone. You can't just decide one day I want to go to highway. It is a rigorous application process. So a little of what got Tasso there. Well, first it was his laudable service as a precinct cop. Perhaps it was his, his exemplary sick record, which I know where he got it from. Three times sick in 14 years. The last time he called in sick was a decade ago. So all of that got him his interview and it landed him in the highway division. And he loved his assignment just as much as he loved riding his Harley Davidson, even when the weather wasn't that good and probably a little too fast from what I hear. In fact, as we said, not only was 10 years ago the time that he last went sick, but Tasso met Irene here in the United States a decade ago too. And the couple married in Greece two years later. And came daughter Jenny, and came little Stavos, and now we had a family. Tasso continued to work hard. The family recently bought a home and moved from Queens to East Northport, literally living the American dream. And while his Plans still call for him to fly helicopters. Highway patrol was a perfect fit for Tasso. The order he kept in his own life and the high standards to which he held everyone else to translated into a dedicated and extremely productive guardian of the roads, keeping others healthy. And while he made a difficult job look easy, the truth is that pulling over speeders and helping stranded motorists and investigating car crashes it was really no safer than his prior assignments in Brooklyn. Highway cops, and I've heard this myself, will tell you that stepping out of cars and onto a road is one of the most nerve-wracking and dangerous things you can do. Distracted drivers racing past, curious rubberneckers rubber not realizing that they're actually veering towards the lights. There are many near misses, and that's under normal circumstances. But when you add in the middle of the night to those scenarios, and the person who makes mistake after mistake, bad decisions, and who still gets behind the wheel of a car, despite already having a suspended license, the result is this funeral. Thankfully, the person who killed Tasso was caught. Only after she fled the scene, an other ill-advised decision that should have real consequences. I don't know what justice will look like in this scenario, but it can, cannot possibly heal two broken families. It's a mystery of the deepest, most painful kind. Why him? How did it happen? And it will hurt forever. Our anger, however, can, can be transformed into change. And our sorrow can make us all better people. There is a national conversation going on right now, the mayor mentioned, about the role of police in society. 
Well, that's a conversation for another day, perhaps. I hope that when that conversation does take place, that people remember Anastasio Sakos and what he lived for, and what he died for. I hope he understands that men and women in law enforcement are willing and eager to evolve and are holding the line every day while others try to figure it out. Desperately waiting for others to figure it out. I think it's a productive discussion to have because the police alone cannot stand solve it all. These things require a full and willing partnership of everyone working together. But still our police, your police, bravely approach each shift, answer each 9-11 call, each car stop on the highway, with the knowledge that they can help people, and that's exactly what they do. They can save lives. What they need, what they deserve, what they have earned, is everyone's support. People who break the law get arrested or ticketed because cops like Tasa take the responsibility of making some decisions on behalf of others. It is a weight to bear, knowing that your choices will directly affect others' lives. But cops like Tasa do not shy away from it. They wear it as a badge of courage. It's the foundation of who they are. I can tell you it's hard, it's challenging, it's stressful work, but it's the fundamental part of our open democratic society. And cops like Tasso are proud to do it each and every day. It's the oath they all swore, it's the promise they make to every New Yorker each and every day, and to themselves, that they would dedicate their lives, they would give their lives to keep others safe. While all police officers embrace this responsibility, cops stand out like Paso when everything is on the line. He was the one you were grateful to arrive on the scene, the one you could always rely on. He was the, the one that always asked, what else can I do? In making almost 200 arrests in his career, Paso led his fellow highway police officers in stopping drunk drivers in recovering stolen vehicles. He always hated that anyone would get away with anything on his shift when it was his responsibility. That's why he even volunteered to go to court, which we didn't allow him because of overtime, on his own time, because he hated people to get away with things. His colleagues at Highway 3 would tell story after story of his professionalism, his commitment to policing, but not only that, also his magnet-like ability to attract the most complicated of scenes. In the police department, we call such things a magilla. It's a job that you don't want to respond to. It's so complicated. But Tasso had a knack. He had a knack not only for responding to it, but handling it, and handling it with the utmost professionalism. When I was at Highway last week, they marveled at the ability that he had to take a scene that you couldn't possibly describe and to put it onto paper, but to be presented to court. He took honor in that. There's another name for those types of jobs, but we are in a house of worship, so I cannot repeat it right now, but I think you can use your imagination. What I will say is that Tasso approached every hectic, stressful situation with calm, dry humor. I had a lot of these stories to choose from, so I had to be a little diplomatic in which one I told, so I'll tell this one. But one time, while following a vehicle that was traveling probably too fast on the highway, this commanding officer came over the police radio and said, terminate the pursuit. A few minutes passed. Tasso's distinct Greek accent came over the radio it's self-terminated, Central. His car's on fire. <laughs> He's not going anywhere. 
and here's my favorite part, but send the five apart. <laughs> his, his co-workers, and there were many, many stories. His co-workers, who do an admirable job of imitating Tasso's deadpan delivery, insist that his name and photo should be hanging up in Highway 3, and I have a feeling it will be. The reason why it should be hanging up on Highway 3 is because he won the Cop of the Award, Month Award so long. Recognized by his peers for his exceptional duty. While his tenacity and strength made him a leader among his contemporaries, he would shy away from and even downplay the accolades that naturally came as a result of his actions. He knew what was important, and I'm looking at what was important. Another story I liked was that he would stay late to finish the job and then race home, I read it to you. And the, the officer told me somehow he would speed past him on the highway, but that's another story. <laughs> but he had that balance right. And throughout his remarkable life, Tasso just wanted to do what was right. And he desperately wanted others to do the same. And I know that he got that from his mom and dad and his upbringing and his service to Greece. I would ask everyone who can hear my voice today to just take a moment to appreciate police officers. Like Anastasio. They are your neighbors. They put themselves in harm's way each and every day to keep everyone safe. That is Tasso's enduring legacy. His legacy protects us still. And that legacy expands today as I have the distinct honor to promote Tasso to the rank of Detective First Grade. We won't nearly finish his work, but the respect is in the effort. God bless you all. Brothers and sisters, at this point, please help me welcome to the podium Irene Tacos, the beloved wife of Anastasios. Thank you all.
for being here today to honor my beloved husband. It's impossible to summarize in a few words who my husband was and what he meant to us. I can try and give you a little glimpse. Basso was an amazing person. He was the nicest guy you could ever meet. A good man. He truly was. He was kind to everyone and helpful to anyone. He was a doer. If there was a need for help, and my husband was around, he would do the job. Whether at work or anywhere else, whether for a friend, a family member, a neighbor, a stranger, you knew Dasa would be the first to help. He cared about people. Truly cared. If he could make a life a little easier, a little better, he would do it. It mattered to him. Dasa was also very funny. He loved making people laugh. Leave it to Dasa to come up with a quick and witty response to make you laugh. He was an excellent motorcycle rider. He learned how to ride at a very young age and loved to ride his motorcycle any chance he could. As you heard, he was also an airplane pilot. One of his dreams was to one day win the lotto and buy a small airplane so we could travel the world. He was an inter eternal optimist. And he could always find the bright side of things. He was an awesome, awesome person. But he was also very humble. Our family was his biggest pride and joy. He would often tell me, Babe, I wake and I sleep with you and the kids in mind. Everything I do, I do it for you. And he worked very, very hard to do that. He was the best father to our children. So loving and nurturing. He was a hands-on dad. There was nothing he wouldn't do for his children. He was their playmate, and he loved it. He built them little houses out of cardboard boxes, take them to the park, or play with them in the yard or the driveway. He would tell them funny bedtime stories, which would keep them up and set